Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Compliance Corner with John Hansen. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020, and I am here with my good friend, John. John, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you, Cole. I'm so glad. Okay, so we have just a few um, things to talk about regarding um, what listing brokers must do. And there's kind of a couple things here. So let's go into that. And first of all, we say, first they must prepare sellers for showings, inspections, appraisals, et cetera, during the coronavirus pandemic. Tell us more about that, John. Yeah, so um, so as, as all of you are probably aware by now, during this, during this uh, governor's order to uh, work out of our home, we've been given this these couple of rare exemptions to go to the to the home, and one of those is for showings. And so, so for showings, we want to make sure our seller is prepared on how that's to be done, because the buyer's agent and the buyer um, and no one else can be in the house. There can only be two people in the house at a time. So that means one of the buyers has to stay outside. One of the buyers can go in with the agent. That means there can't be any sellers in the house at all. So, so they've got to, you know, they've got to prepare to, and you've got to help them understand. They've got to be prepared to vacate so that that can be done. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we may make the assumption that our sellers know all of these things when actually they don't at all. Um, and it is our responsibility as a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that they understand that. Okay. Yeah, and, next especially cool, and especially with the other things with the appraiser and the uh, inspector, they need to be briefed beforehand uh, on what to do there because the buyer's agent may not be there because they're trying to stay home and obey that governor's order. So they may just be making the arrangements for the inspection or for the appraisal um, and won't even be there. And the seller needs to understand that and they need to understand the protocols still have to be there only two people in the house at a time while it's being done okay great point on that john great point all right number two is ensure that an acceptance of one offer over another is based on income right so so what we want to make sure our sellers are prepared to do is to make no decisions based on the person or people who are buying the house so it can't be based on what their last name is. It can't be based on, you know, issues of, 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 of ethnicity or, or of religion or anything else. It's got to be based on uh, income and we've got to be prepared to defend ourselves in case we are accused of something later on. I mean, this is something that has happened. So we, we want to make sure that our seller makes their decision on which offer to take based on the, the money only and has nothing to do with the person. Okay, which could, great. Which could, be, which could even be family, the term family. You know, what we want to, we want to give it to a nice family. You know, that's discrimination. Absolutely, okay. And that's just a good reminder all the time. That's not just because of the coronavirus pandemic. That's good advice all the time. Uh, and our next point is, again, it's good advice all the time. It's follow proactively to paragraph two of form 22A. So let me actually show that particular paragraph two, John, to so tell us more about that. Okay. Yeah, so these are, these are steps that I just, you know, these have been implemented for three years now, this new, this new I'll call it new, three years, <laughs> this paragraph two of the financing addendum 22A. And a listing agent, we need, we need to, as listing agents, be following this, these processes and making sure we're protecting our seller so our seller doesn't get locked into a contract with the buyer uh, for 30 days only to find out on day 29 that uh, they're not going to qualify and then have to put it back on the market and then feel frustrated and, 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 and all that. And it's just not you know, it should never get to that point. So a listing agent has to take some control here and, and follow that uh, um, 2A, which is that within 10 days, uh, and I would personally, as a listing agent, if I was um, 
receiving that offer, I would counter offer that and put six, six days in there. Um, within six days of mutuality, the listing agent can send off a request for loan information. And then the uh, buyer's agent would have to respond within three days with the form 22AP. So we send off 22AL in, in paragraph uh, 2B, they respond by sending the 22AP. Uh, and then when we, when we get the 22AP, we now have permission in writing signed by the buyer to get loan information directly from the lender. So we can do every day if we want to follow up on that loan and make sure that it it's moving along smoothly instead of being the victim, waiting till the end and then cursing out the other agent and panicking and having to put the house back on the market. Great point on that, John. And it's just about, um, you know, we've got contractual obligations that both parties agree with uh, at the onset and it's following those uh, predetermined uh, stipulations within the contract um, sometimes, you know, it's interesting, I'll talk to agents and they're fearful of this because they don't want the deal to fall apart, but these really are predetermined, pre-agreed upon stipulations um, on financing within the contract. Right. Yep. Yes, thank you, Colin. And the other, the only other issue I wanted to add to that is to make sure that the listing agent is, is aware and discusses with the seller their option of uh, sending the form 22AR after the 30 days, uh, after the 30 days of, of the loan protection for the buyer, um, on day 31, sending that 22AR, giving them notification, giving the buyer notification to either uh, have loan approval or waive their financing mm -hmm. contingency. Absolutely. And a best practice is probably going to be as soon as you've made that agreement, so you get to mutual acceptance uh, on your purchase and sale agreement, point back to this particular paragraph with the buyer's agent and say, okay, this is, we've agreed upon this. So just let you know, I always follow through on this particular thing. So just be aware of that. Then I think everyone is you know, up, uh, up front is agreeing. Everybody's very, very clear on this particular paragraph. So it makes it very easy then to move forward because a lot of times buyer's agents don't necessarily understand this particular paragraph very well. And it is our responsibility as people who represent sellers to understand this because this protects the seller, right? Okay. Well, John, thank you so much for pointing out these uh, listing agent musts. It is very important. And uh, as always, thank you so much for all of your uh, wonderful guidance and input on all things compliance. So I hope you have a fantastic day, John. Thanks. You too. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.